stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now, I need it. Yeah, stop it now. I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We are breaking up with RBS. This is episode number 15. I am Tawny Santabria. And I am JDK Winnikin. I just got scolded right out of the gate. <laughs> it was just perfect. For, I was just grooving a I little know. bit. It was perfect timing. I don't know. You know I, I couldn't stop myself. Well, that's all right. Well, yeah. well, thank you. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> everything's starting off on a good foot here. <laughs> Uh, welcome to everybody who uh, <laughs> is joining us, uh, whether you're on 106.9 Warm uh, this morning. Good morning. Thanks for spending uh, the first part of your weekend with us. Uh, if you're listening as a podcast, hope you're having a wonderful day, wherever it is, whatever time it is. And I uh, hope that you will take a look at the video feed of this on our YouTube channel at Breaking Up With Our BS. Just spell out the word and you'll find it. You can also join our Facebook group of the same name and get material in between and kind of previews and we have some stuff coming up that we're going to be talking about between episodes, uh, so you can tune in for that. Uh, but we are back to debunk some more junk. That's what we do. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And last week, uh, we had our first guest, mm -hmm. and she was such a hit that we brought her back again for a follow-up conversation. Hi, Emily. Hello. Welcome Hi, Emily. back. Thank you. Thanks for come, being willing to come back, because a half hour isn't enough, is it? No, it's not. Big into this. So, uh, so thank you uh, for coming back in. And Emily joined us last week uh, to talk about parenting. We've been talking about parenting for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Emily is the mother of a two-year-old boy. Uh, and we talked a lot last week about several things. We talked about the mess, like the comparing messages, Emily, that you mm -hmm. were facing or what the experience that was like of you just first coming home with your son. And mm -hmm. then the so-called terrible twos, which we talked about as kind of a story and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And a, a couple of common things came up. We talked about you know, kind of noted that the human body knows, a woman's body knows how to give birth and to instinct, I think mm -hmm. is the word you used, Emily, right. to, to nurture the child and help it grow. And that babies kind of are a good model of how we can get present, particularly the breathing mm -hmm. part of getting yeah. present. They yeah. breathe with their whole body and that type of thing. And then we finished off by, uh, Tawny, you telling, you know, asking everybody to just notice the stories when they come in. So I think maybe that's where we can go mm -hmm. Emily so the stories that you've noticed you obviously brought some last yeah. week have are there other ones that have come up that you've noticed and when was the first time you started noticing that stories were stories was it before you started listening to the show or was it after when you guys told me <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. yikes so <laughs> all right okay okay well did we tell her? Did we tell her that? Did we just... We've been talking about stories for a little while. <laughs> we have. And we keep saying, that's a story. <laughs> we do. We so, do it to each other. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think there was a natural, like, I feel like that that's not normal kind of thing before I heard the podcast uh, um, where I noticed a lot of me comparing myself to others and other moms and my comparing my own son to other kids. And Ooh. that's mm -hmm. a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think I started to notice those things and I did a little bit of work on it, but mm -hmm. it really did not become apparent until I started listening to breaking up with our BS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those bullshits. Yeah. As you mentioned. The mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's there. It, it, it happens a lot. And Tony, is, is that a lot of times when you think when we have that sense that something isn't right, Mm -hmm. Like something isn't working. Is that mm -hmm. usually a good sign? There might be a bullshit in there somewhere. Yes, there's so many signs. But but certainly, mm -hmm. if we're tapping into ourselves and right. we feel like like there's something about uh, feeling anxious or um, not not good enough or um, something there being a problem, mm -hmm. oftentimes there's a story attached to that. Um, I think yeah, even if we're looking for a particular outcome. Oftentimes, and feeling a particular way, oftentimes mm -hmm. there's a story related to that of some kind of need for future certainty or some kind of need to, you know, for something to happen into the future. Anytime we're in the future or the past, mm -hmm. we can pretty much guarantee that there's a story yeah. there just waiting for us. Yeah, that's interesting. So you mentioned comparing your son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said that's a powerful one. So I want to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like what, what kinds of things are you talking about when you say comparing your son to other kids? A big thing was walking. Okay. 
my son started walking three days, three days, four days before his first birthday. And so there was all of this, oh, well, should he be walking by now? Should he be showing signs of wanting to walk? Because he loved to crawl. He crawled everywhere. And he, we would, ever since he was, what, eight months old, we would prop him up and kind of help him walk to kind of build up the... The muscle memory? The, right, right, something. Whatever yeah, <laughs> whatever. Right. To want like to I walk. Know. <laughs> I, know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just here. Um, so there is a lot of comparison of that, like when they should be eating solid foods, um, when they should say their first word. When are the, when is it supposed to be? Like, so when you say he was walking for his, I, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. Is there a time frame that's expected for kids to be walking? I think if they're not walking by, I want to say either 15 or 16 months, then it's a sign of concern and that they have to go okay. to some kind of physical therapy. Okay. But I, I could be wrong. So my kids were clearly delayed. Um, because they had really large heads. There's large, he large heads in our family. So they didn't walk till 15 or 16 months. And it was so amazing because I didn't have to start chasing them until they were 15 or 16 months. <laughs> so I didn't see it as a problem at all. It's like, like this is great. Good. Your 10 month old is walking. Great for you. <laughs> look what, look what. <laughs> He's right where I left him. <laughs> this is so amazing. <laughs> wow, I didn't think about it. So, yeah. so like head size, why? Because it's more weight they have to hold yeah. up? Or more balance? They have... oh, oh, definitely. I mean, it, it takes, if you've got a large head, like we're in the plus 90s and up. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. just kind of how too. that goes. And if you've got a large head, then it's really, really challenging to sit, you know, to sit up as early. Right. Right. Then to hold it up and crawl as early. That makes sense. Then to transition to, wow. you know, standing Learn up. something and, new every day. Yeah. So, so these, these like shoulds, these should be doing this by this time. Right. Okay. So what was the comparison where it was your son walking sooner or later than the other kids you were comparing him to? Um, sooner and some were later, you know, there's social media. So you compare yourself and your son mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple bloggers that I follow that are like, stop comparing your kids to other people because mm -hmm. right. each kid is different. Each child is different. They're going to develop, they're going to learn, they're going to do things on their own time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Must be interesting. Cause when, so if he starts early on something, do you catch yourself telling the story like, oh, he's, he's in good shape he's or so he's smart. advanced. He's, he's this. Yeah. I do that a lot. Okay. Because, yeah, because yeah, stories can go the other way. Yeah. We talk a lot about that, too. We can make up stories about positive elements. We focus right. a lot on the negative stories, but the positive ones can get us out of reality yeah. just as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely do that a lot. Where I'm like, oh, he's so smart. Like, wow, well, look, he remembered this. And mm -hmm. it right. could be detrimental to him in the future. Yes. Well, it's, it's a story nonetheless. Yeah. Right. So there's going to be a time when he's not going to appear smart. I promise you. Yeah. Probably around 15 or 16, <laughs> oh, maybe 12 or 13. Oh, a lot. I mean, there's going to be so many times that he is not going to appear smart. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of times he's not going to be smart and act smart. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's how we learn. I think as you know, so like, if I, if I hit my head against this wall, what will happen anyway? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> One thing that he's super into right now is kind of like a coping mechanism for him. When he gets angry, he'll grab a pillow and like throw his head on the pillow. Hmm. Like oh. he'll put it on the ground and like throw his head on it. And I'm like, does he scream into if it? If that hurts, why would you, why would you do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> does he yell into it? No, no, he just he slams just, his yeah, head. He, yeah. Wow. Cause yeah. he gets mad. Does it hurt? But sometimes. So he, he does it and then kind of yeah. stands up and rubs his head. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Maybe it's a, I was doing a yoga class today on a side note <laughs> and they were talking about joyful pain. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe there's some joyful pain that's happening so there for him. He's doing it for fun? Oh man. It sounds like he does when he's angry though. So, well, I mean, there's worse things he could be doing. Maybe it's a release of sorts. It I mean, could be. Maybe. as yeah. long could be. as. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're not seeing something really alarming right. around the safety thing. Yeah. Then it could just be a release of sorts. At least he grabs a pillow, though. Exactly. That's, that's, that's yeah. smart. That's he's, not smart. Grabbing, he's not grabbing a knife. <laughs> right. He's not grabbing knives. Yeah. You know? um, okay. So, so you find yourself with that. Well, but it seems to me like if we're telling stories about our kid based on where they should be as they develop, yeah. that's still a story on some level, Tawny, about us, isn't it? 
moms usually behind the scenes mm-hmm. is, oh, okay, so what is that going to mean for me? Or what does that mean about me? Like he's not here yet, so therefore there must be something that I'm not doing or something or wrong I'm with a bad my mom. bad mom or mm-hmm. my genetics are weird. Or mm-hmm. or that our, there's something wrong with our child. And so then what does that mean for my own parenting if something's wrong with my child? Yeah. You know, all of the, the, the behind the scenes stories around that. And, and most of it we're just making up. Yeah. yeah. Most of it is not real. Yeah. We're making it up. Because it doesn't, Emily, does it stop for you when that happens? Do you note if you have a concern and then put it aside or, you know, talk to your, talk to a pediatrician or can you spin off into, I need to make sure this is true. I need to do this, this, and this, or I need to be prepared for that. Do you do a lot of like mental planning ahead? Yeah. Okay. I do a lot of mental planning and I hate to admit this, but I Google. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm like what does it mean when my child does this mm. um which is not good well yeah i would think you would get a lot of different information right. tough to, it would be tough right. to discern what actually is authoritative and what's right. not mm-hmm. but i man because that that seems to me to be fertile soil for mm-hmm. 20 some odd different stories for five different possible scenarios of what yeah. may or may not be wrong with right. child mm-hmm. right what in that scenario what's helpful for you i just pay attention to my child and if there's something that is concerning of uh, i, I kind of analyze it right where i'm like okay if he's doing this or if he's not doing this in time or if he's you know whatever then i kind of analyze it and look at the whole picture like is this detrimental to his health is there a problem is it just he's still learning so he's always learning Yeah. (laughs) And he'll continue to learn. Yeah. Right. Like, so at at some point, um, more and more and more information, like really being able to assess for yourself, like, is this process of trying to find more information actually helpful Mm -hmm. or is it moving me away from being present? Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, sometimes it might be. I mean, sometimes there could be something significant that's alarming, but, but sometimes, but sometimes we're Googling at the first sign of, anything Um, wrong really or or, and and what's wrong like what's our story about what makes something wrong yeah Mm -hmm. right like what what would be some of the things that come to mind for you that would be like wrong that you'd have to look and at closer recently there have been a lot of issues with his sleep so he would there was one week where he would wake up like three or four times in the night and he he doesn't sleep in a crib he sleeps on a toddler bed so he can get out and come into my room Mm -hmm. and I thought something was wrong because I'm like, why aren't you sleeping? (laughs) If someone were telling me to go to bed and sleep for eight plus hours a night, gladly. (laughs) Sure. I wouldn't be getting up. So there was this whole, what is wrong? Is it his diet? Is it his health? Is he stressed? Is he feeling my emotions? What, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And so I took to Google and <laughs> there was an array of messages of what could be wrong, but children go through phases where they don't sleep because mm-hmm. I, and from what I've read on Google is <laughs> something with their mental development, like their, their mind is still developing, their brain is still developing. Oh, yeah. And so it's children aren't going to sleep all their through the night. Like we don't sleep all through the night, every single night. Right. Mm-hmm. We have bad days. We yeah. have good days. We mm-hmm. have bad mm-hmm. night's sleep. We have good night's sleep. So, mm-hmm. Having to kind of take a step back and realize he is still a human. Yes. <laughs> right. He's my child right. that I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he still has everything. He feels everything that I feel. Mm-hmm. He has all the emotions. He has everything. And so mm-hmm. kind of realizing like, mm-hmm. you know, he's not going to be perfect all the time. And not going to be perfect ever. Ever. He's ever. just doing his thing. Well, right? I, mean, I mean, he's just my, developing. My, my kid is perfect. Oh. No, stay. <laughs> where's our, where's our BS story button? We were going to get a BS we story gonna, button. Yeah. She did say that with a smile on her face. For everybody. She did say that. So, uh, but yeah, well, sorry. Right? But certainly, like if we're looking at ourselves and mm-hmm. our kids and our neighbors and the people we love and care about as just being humans, yeah. right? Then there's a whole lot less wrong. Yeah. And there's a lot of peace with that too. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. A lot of presence, you know, being yeah. present, like 
we're all human. We all make mistakes. We all do things. Well, and you're paying attention and, yeah. to him, right? And yeah. that's, and that's what, that's what a child needs is they need a present parent mm -hmm. attention on them, noticing what's happening. What's interesting about that is if you do that, you're probably not worrying then about what, where he fits with other kids or where. How yep. it compares. You're it's getting out of your head space. And getting out of the Google space. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the Google, Google space. Actually, in, that's a whole nother Someone space. take away in, my phone. <laughs> in my family, in my family, I, just to share this, we call that, um, we're going to Ken something. My dad's name is Ken. Mm -hmm. And he loves to look things up on Google. Oh. <laughs> loves it. And so, I mean, it's one of his favorite that. things to do. And he'll go, he'll just say, well, let's look it up. <laughs> he loves it. And we started calling it, um, let's, let's go ahead and Ken it. Yeah, so that's, that's what I keep brilliant. thinking of it. And he, and he embraced that term by the yeah. way. So I'm not telling mm -hmm. stories out of school, but, <laughs> um, but that's, that seems to me to be the key is if we, if we accept just like we do for ourselves, that we're accepting the stories that come into our heads about whatever it might be, our relationships, our, our work, and we accept that they're there, but we recognize them as such and we don't make them a problem mm -hmm. the same way. It's not really a problem that your son's not sleeping every single night right. the way mm -hmm. you're used to. It's a problem for me. It's a problem for you. <laughs> right. And yet that's also, you can know that that's part of being a parent mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, that that's not going to last either. Right. right. All those things. Boy, it eliminates a lot of the, a lot of the mm -hmm. stresses, a lot of the energy right. there, yeah. which of course is ultimately what's most beneficial for the kid, right? Mm -hmm. Is better energy for mom, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. at his yeah. age. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yes. And then it, 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 you know, circles back around because then if he has calmer feel of calmer energy more often, mm -hmm. right. Then that helps you. Right. Right. So it, it is quite mm -hmm. helpful for both. Um, you're sharing sort of an energetic state, yeah. whether you like it or not. So you mm. will share a stressful energetic state if you so choose or a less stressful energetic yeah. state between the two of you. Mm -hmm. And when we make a problem out of a lot of things, and that's what comparing does. That's what, problems that's what all Kenning does. <laughs> and Kenning. And Kenning. Googling. Comparing and Kenning yeah. um, makes a problem out of a lot of things. Yeah. We're more likely going to be in a stressed state. Yeah. Which interestingly is going to compound the issue, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It just It just adds more. Absolutely. Fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And that's, you know, in part the increase of anxiety mm -hmm. disorders or diagnoses right. mm -hmm. um, is directly related to parts of that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I have a question. When, yeah. when you were, when you were pregnant and you were learning, you know, doing all the reading and all this, what yeah. was going to happen? The Googling. Well, the Googling. Yeah. <laughs> when, when all that was happening, um, the reason I'm asking this is, let me sidebar around it. Mm -hmm. Um, there is, I think sometimes I, I'm meeting people with kids. They'll say, well, this kid is like this and my other child is like this. Mm -hmm. They're very different. And yes, they're developing as their own individual people. But what oftentimes doesn't, it seems to me, at least doesn't get into the conversation is exactly what you just said, Tony. Mm -hmm. That yes, we're responsible for raising the child, feeding it, making sure it sleeps, doesn't hurt itself. But how often do, does stuff that prepares parents to be parents talk about what you just said? Like, did you hear any of those things? Like, your your energy is going to affect the child, both in the womb and, and or was it like, they're going to be their own thing and you just respond how you're going to respond? I heard it from one person and okay. I did not listen to them. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I, I, do you understand what I'm getting at? It's like, you know, the, the child is going to develop as an individual person, but particularly at the mm -hmm. age that Emily's son is at, it's, it's symbiotic. Yeah. yeah. Energy wise. We don't talk about humans in that way because it's that always that anyway. Like right. what we're doing here. Right. If, if we didn't like each other and we were all in this room right here, it would be a completely different experience. Yeah, yeah that's true. It has nothing to do with who we are as an individual. Like I bring my individual uh, in here. It's, it's mm. what's created between people. Mm. Interesting. So you didn't get. There wasn't a lot of talk about that. No, there wasn't. Okay. There wasn't. It was mostly diet, <laughs> what you should and should not be eating when you're mm -hmm. pregnant, mm -hmm. what side you should sleep on when you're, you know, when you're pregnant and. Which I guess has its uses, <laughs> but, but it seems like this is a kind of a big this gap. Is, <laughs> it is. It really is. Cause when, yeah. when you're mm -hmm. pregnant, I mean, mm -hmm. it, this is common knowledge. Everyone knows this, but your child 
is inside of your body. What's soothing <laughs> this? Like that, part's com- you. That, part's, <laughs> that part's common knowledge. Okay, I didn't know that. What's, what? <laughs> Wait. What's soothing them is your heartbeat. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's what they know. So when my son was a newborn, he loved to sleep on my chest because mm-hmm. he could listen to my heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when my anxiety would kick in, my heart. Oh, and then he could pick up on yep, that. Yep, and then he could pick up on that. And what we do, we match heartbeats. Our bodies right. try to match the pacing with each other. Are you mm. serious? Yes. Yes. Isn't that weird? That's weird. It's part of connectivity, <laughs> right? It's part of connecting. Yeah. So that's why we can feel calmer in the presence of another person than we might feel. I mean, it's not only why. There's lots of different things, parts of that. But we can, as we're connecting from a heart place, that's the kind of thing that's starting to happen when we talk about that. Mm -hmm. Is we're in coherence with each other from a heart place has nothing to do with sort of like, oh, do you believe my ideas? I believe your ideas. We have same values. Okay, that's great, right? Like now we can be friends, right? That's more from the thinking space. Yeah. yeah. Earlier I was telling Tani, I was like, I feel so calm <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> like you're so calming. Yeah, she has, that, she has that effect on a lot of people. Yeah, she is. But that's, but that's, that is what happens, right? I mean, that's one of the things that I've learned that in conversations with people, if you come in, connected, calm, Mm -hmm. and connect with them however Mm -hmm. they are, their body is going to start to want to match it. Which is why, like, you know, if you bring anger into a conversation, you're going to get it in in return. Right. Mm -hmm. Chances are. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that's Mm -hmm. happened to me where I come in feeling great. Somebody throws anger at me and all of a sudden I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. Let's go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Match it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, So that never stops. No, it never stops. We just spend more time in the thinking space that we're sort of like disconnected from it. Like sometimes when I work with folks through softening, they'll get to a place of like, okay, well, I don't know what's in my heart space. I Mm -hmm. say, go to the heart. Let's spend some time there. I can't feel anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Part of that is because we've lived a long time sort of disconnected from that place in our body. We've covered it up past hurts. There's lots of stuff. Yeah. Jammed it down. There's lots of reasons why that happens, but when we connect more often there and for bell- from belly space, we're, we're basically being a thermostat, sort of like we're regulating Ooh. with others, right? Yes. Like we can do this in the presence of other people, like at like a thermostat. Let's yeah. take it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's bring it up a little bit. And, mm. and, and, and oftentimes then the other folks in the room will, that will impact I'm not going to say negatively or positively. It's just going to have some impact as we do that. Wow. So Emily doing that with her son Mm -hmm. is going to be something that she can do starting now, but can continue through Mm -hmm. her whole relationship with him. And my son can do that too. Exactly. With his relationship. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. It's huge. It is interesting how quickly we lose that. Boy, and if you're, if you, if it isn't part of preparation to become a parent, it's certainly not going to come in after you've become one right? right and there's a million other things to think yeah. about man this is important stuff it is it is really important mm-hmm. stuff well we're we're coming down once again to the end of another episode emily is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you wanted to throw out there i mean if we can't fully answer today we could start anything else no, you i just i love your sweatshirt tony yeah thank you so much <laughs> i'm looking at the video and i'm like oh um looks like a painter Shirt. <laughs> it does. Kind of like you would blend in in a forest, but it's not really camouflage. I know. I really liked it. And I was wearing it. And then I look up here. I was like, oh, I'm going to paint a house when I get done here. You look super cozy. Though. Well, you look yes, cute. Yeah. I am really cozy. Thank you. Yeah. So all, all I wore was a knit sweater. That's all I, that's all I have. That's all you have. That's all I've got. Okay. Not really. Um, well, anyway, uh, this is fast. I mean, we could continue on know, all I this. And this. we are going to continue. Uh, we are going to keep talking about parenting, right? We are. We're, mm-hmm. we're uh, I think it's safe for us to announce we have another guest coming in who's going to talk about teenagers, its own, Ooh. its own minefield, <laughs> right, mm-hmm. um, of things coming up on on later episodes. But um, Emily, really appreciate you coming in and mm-hmm. your transparency and openness and mm-hmm. vulnerability sharing about all this tough stuff. Yeah, um, this is super fun. Yeah, Thank and I, I guarantee there are plenty of plenty of parents who yeah. mm-hmm. hopefully will hear this. Yeah, because. I um, hope so. 
Yeah. And, it, and I think it's really great that your son's two and you can like, yeah. do all these things with him at a, at a younger age. Thank mm-hmm. you both for having me. Oh, it's been great. Absolutely. You're welcome. Absolutely. Well, thanks. And thank you to all of you out there for uh, joining us for another episode of Breaking Up With Our BS. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I look forward mm-hmm. to more mm-hmm. conversations. Um, again, make sure you check out our Facebook page, join that group. Uh, you can also check out our YouTube channel, Breaking Up With Our BS. You can find this on your favorite podcast platform. And of course, we're here every week on 106.9 Warm, Saturday mornings, 5 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So until the next time, I am J.D.K. Winnegan. And I am Tawny Santabria. Thanks for joining us on Breaking Up With Our BS. We will mm-hmm. see you next time. Mm-hmm. How do you all feel tonight? Stop, stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now. I mean it. I don't think he felt anything after the crash. Who's that guy, Jackie?